Middle Tennessee student athletes, Ja'Cory Williams, Giddy Potts, and Reggie Upshaw. Thank you for joining us, guys. Questions, please. Gary DeMatto, Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Um, for Giddy, um, how do you guys react internally in the locker room when, uh, when people talk about your seating, when they say you're an underdog, when they say you're a Cinderella team, especially after the season you guys have had? Um, we really don't um, consider that game as an upset or anything you want to call it. We just went out there and played our game like Coach told us to, and we came out with a big win. And the seeding and stuff, I think that stuff is just out the window for our team. We just go out there and play the game that we love and um, enjoy it. Could I get one of, one of the other two guys to answer the same question, please? Uh, Ja'Cory, why don't you go take a whack at it first? <clears throat> I mean, yeah, to touch on what Giddy said, uh, we don't really pay attention to the, the seedings and, uh, and the upsets, so or what's an upset or what's not an upset. Um, I mean, I don't know. People had us favored to win the game, and some people said it was an upset. So I was kind of confused with the media. So I was kind of <laughs> trying to, we were kind of just trying to focus on the game and try to win the game, try to defend the rebound as best as we could. And um, we defended and rebounded well, and we won the game. So, Reggie? <laughs> um, <clears throat> I, I wouldn't say that uh, we get caught up in the, in the seeding or anything like that, because, I mean, last year was a, a perfect example of, you know, us just going out and playing the game. Um, you know, that's the same way we approached this game uh, yesterday as far as, you know, just going out and, you know, trying to execute what Coach Davis was calling and uh, the different defenses that he was uh, throwing, throwing out, um, you know, in between transitions and stuff like that. Joe Rexford, Nashville, Tennessee. And for Reggie and Giddy, what has Ja'Cory done this year in terms of vocal leadership? What's his role in that way? And what has he added other than what he does on the court? Uh, he, ju he just added experience. Um, Anytime you can come from a, a high major program and, you know, sit out a year and, um, you know, use that year to really uh, make your game better and become a more mature player, um, it, it does nothing but help our team. And, uh, you know, Jacor, he, uh, he really embraced what he did last year. And, you know, it, it, it's coming uh, to light now with how he's playing. And, and uh, as far as being the vocal leader he is, you know, um, you know I, I'm not really the, the most vocal guy at times. And Giddy, uh, he, well, he's never really that vocal, but, uh, <laughs> you know, Ja'Cory's the guy that, you know, if we need somebody to kind of spark the huddle or, uh, you know, just during the game when, when the five that are out there kind of huddle up, he's always the one guy who's, you always hear his voice the most. He said get in, Reggie. Oh, um, I just think this guy right here, he's um, grown up as a man and on and off the floor. He helps uh, guys in so many, so many ways. And he just give our team a spark when he's in the game and when he's out the game. Um, just having a vocal um, presence in the huddle and all stuff like that. Jacory, uh, Josh Vardaman, MT Athletics. Um, kind of talk about Butler, um, seating aside, what you guys um, are expecting to see and what kind of game we can expect to see on Saturday. Um, I think. Um, you got to see two two well coached teams that that focus on defense and um, a lot of help defense. But both teams are uh, they rebounder. Uh, from watching film, they they they're bigs. They're not conventional bigs. They don't just roll to the rim. They can step out and shoot the ball a little bit. Um, they they actually play their offense mostly through one of their forwards. Uh, he's a great passer. Um, kind of hard to try to double team him because he knows that Zach got a hit. And um, it's gonna be a tough task. But I think you're gonna see a game, a physical game. Both teams are trying to play very good defense, and um, both will coach teams. Nancy Armour with USA Today. Ja'Cory, can you talk about or describe what it was like last year to watch the tournament? I know you went to St. Louis, I believe, on your own. Um, and can you just kind of go through the details of, you know, how far of a drive it was? What did you do in terms of lodging, all that kind of stuff? Um, from, um, from Murfreesboro to St. Louis, uh, it was on like a four and a half, five hour drive. I probably made it four and a half. I was kind of speeding <laughs> a little bit, <laughs> kind of excited to uh, watch these guys play. But I mean, there was no question I was going to go to the game no matter how far it was. I don't care if it was a 10 to 12 hour drive. Uh, I wanted to show my teammates that I was there to support them. I was just, just as excited um, as they were to play in the game. And uh, 
I felt the excitement, but I'm pretty sure that these guys felt way more excited than I was because they actually played in the game. But I was excited for my team, and um, I felt like I kind of helped a little bit. Uh, I was on the scout team, so I kind of went at Reggie and Giddy all year long on the scout team trying to uh, simulate other guys' plays, other teams' players, and um, I kind of had fun doing it. I enjoyed watching these guys um, get the win last year. So. Uh, David Woods from the Indianapolis Star. For, for any of you, um, have you talked among yourselves or thought at all about, you know, you guys are sort of in a role that, that Butler used to be in often as being a, you know, from a smaller conference and uh, underdog team trying to make a, trying to make a run. Uh, what do you guys think about that? Maybe let's start with Reggie and just come down the line, please. Um, at the beginning of the year, Coach Davis always, whenever we have our first team meeting, he'll He'll explain how we're trying to be a national program and how, um, you know, us being a mid-major team, uh, you know, we, we look up to teams like Butler or, or a VCU or, you know, the, the teams that are considered, are, they're technically mid-majors, but really nobody really considers them that way. But, um, you know, we, we embraced that role of being where they were a couple of years ago and being in that smaller conference and, you know, kind of shocking the world or, you know, having a lot of upsets um, in our background. but. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we're a confident group, and you know, we'll we'll play against anybody. Um, just like Reggie said, uh, coach explains everything at the beginning of the year, and just tells everybody that they have something to uh, prove this year, and everybody take that as something that we can play for and have a chip on our shoulder, and everybody. Um, um, basically took their role and uh, played and we came out as a big team in, um, um, in the NCAA. So I think that coach is that guy that tells us what we need to do and how we need to do it. So that's a big key. I think uh, uh, for, uh, for me and our team, I think it's like an honor playing against a team like Butler because we want to be so much like that school, um, to watch that school grow from seven years ago up to now is um, it's really incredible the way that school has grown and um, you can't really call them a mid major. Uh, they're kind of like Gonzaga and Wichita State. They win so much. They're so effective in the tournament. It's hard to really compare them to major schools. They, they play like a major school. So to play this type of team and um, knowing that Middle Tennessee is trying to um, trend upwards to try to kind of be like Butler, it's a, it's a big honor for me and my teammates. And we're, we're trying to help this program kind of get on the map a little bit. Michael Cohen from the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. This is for any of you guys. Um, can you sort of describe what it's like to play in a league where you may have to win the conference tournament to get in? And how does that pressure throughout the season help you, do you think, in a situation like this where obviously the pressure just inherently is higher than it would be in a different situation? Um, I think we just can't um, let any games get past us. Uh, we just got to go out there and play our game every game and go out there and be physical with every team. And we know every team is going to give us their best shot. So that's the main thing. We just got to go out there and play play our game every game. Um, I guess going off what Giddy said, you know, playing in a conference where we it's basically seen as you have to win the conference tournament. Um, we're just used to playing with that pressure. So when a team like like yesterday, when Minnesota made their their run where they jumped out on a 7-0, you know, we were used to kind of playing with that uh, that pressure, of, you know, having to fight back to get into that game. So, um, you know, playing in Conference USA and playing uh, with that pressure of, you know, you have to win the conference tournament to get back, you know, we're used to it. Bob Kravitz with NBC in Indianapolis. Ja'Cory, what, what are some of the keys to playing the 1-3-1 effectively? And when you play it well, what, what are some of the impacts that you see on the other team? Uh, I think a big key with playing the one-three runs on, you can't really be complacent. Uh, I think the pressure has to be very aggressive. Um, our back line has to be correct on the, on the rotation. Um, basically, all five guys have to be on the same page. Um, I think the more aggressive you are, the, the more aggressive you are, the better it can be. And um, it's kind of like a guard stopper, kind of helps keep guards out of the lane. They can't really split it because we have a guy in the middle um, that's so active and athletic that can move with a guard. And um, I think. What it does for the game is um, get get teams out of rhythm. I know a lot of these teams, these high major teams, they're used to just saying conventional man-to-man -man defense. Uh, one three one kind of slows you down and uh, changes the rhythm of the game. Uh, this is for Reggie. Um, yesterday, 
you know, the crowd was behind me, and your crowd, and I could hear them yelling lots of instructions to you and, and what kind of stuff to do. And, and I'm wondering, you know, after you hit the three, you kind of turned and, and, you know, pumped your fist towards them. What, is it a lot of family in your uh, crowd, or is that, are they a very vocal group usually at your games? Um, I mean, I consider all of the Blue Raider Nation my family, so uh, whenever anybody's trying to yell out instructions or anything like that, um, you know, it's, it's all for the best, and they just want to see us win. So, um, you know, everybody thinks that they're a coach um, while, they're <laughs> while they're watching the games, and they think they know uh, what the best, you know, what the best thing to do is. But, um, you know, at that point, I was just trying to make the shots um, that my team needed. Um, so. I mean, I didn't hear anybody yelling anything. I guess it was too many people for me to hear, but, um, you know, I was just out there trying to, you know, help my team win. Uh, Michael Cohen again from the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Uh, whether it was Coach Patino yesterday or um, Coach Holtman today, uh, when you guys look at yourselves and teams refer to you as being extremely physical and playing very tough, with a lot of aggression. Where does that come from? Is that something that you guys take upon yourselves? Is it from the style of practices you have? Where do you think the, the physicality comes from that you're able to overwhelm certain teams? I think it's from our practices. Um, especially early in the year, uh, we do a lot of rebounding drills, a lot of uh, two-on-one rebounding drills, three-on-three box out drills. Um, you know, just all the physical stuff that you see in our games today, um, you know, it really started in early, early November when we were, you know, going through the grind of just trying to make it to that first game to, to start the season. Anything else? Thank you. Good luck tomorrow night. Thank
Joined by Middle Tennessee head coach Kermit Davis. Questions, please. Coach Daryl Moody from the Nevada Appeal. It all surprised when you found out you were going to be a 12 seed. Disappointing? You know, it wasn't disappointment because of, you know, we were glad to be in the tournament, but it, it kind of alarmed us going forward that, you know, we were ranked in the coaches' poll 25th and our RPI is like 35, and everybody says you need to play a good non conference strength of schedule, and it was 18th, and we'd won 30 games. So, what that would alarm us is what do we have to do next year or the year after, you know? And then when they ranked us 48th, you know, would you have got in if you got beat in the conference tournament finals? We think we would have, but that'd be a, it's a question you'd like to ask the committee, and it's full of a, a lot of guys with great integrity. So it is something that was a concern, but it was about matchups and, uh, and obviously our team was excited about being in. Kermit, you, you've answered this, oh, I'm sorry, Bob Kravitz with uh, NBC in Indianapolis. You've answered this before, but how important is it to your program to establish itself as a, another Butler or a Gonzaga or Wichita State VCU? You know, it's, it's been a goal of mine for a while. And um, when I took over 15 years ago, uh, you know, Gonzaga, I used to be the coach at Idaho. So I saw when Gonzaga played in a little place, set about 2,200. And uh, Dan Fitzgerald was the coach. And, and then they hired Dan Munson. And, and then it's kind of rest is history. And, uh, but then I, I really, I've had such a, a great respect for Butler from afar because they do it at our level in such a way with integrity, with athletics and academics. You know, last year to be included with Butler, this was a stat, uh, there were seven teams in the NCAA tournament last year to win a game and have a 100% graduation rate. And we were one of them, Butler was one of them, Duke, Notre Dame, Kansas, and I think Iowa. And so to be on the same footing, you know, as, as those guys uh, and just, what they've done with sustainability is something that we're, we're sure striving for. We're not there yet by any means. We've got, got a lot of hard work ahead of us. Coach, uh, Josh Vardon with MT Athletics. Um, your guys really aren't looking at the seeding going into Saturday. They're really looking at the matchup. How have you gotten them to, to kind of do that? You know, I, I think it's been a – we've been a team that's been favored so much this year you know, that they've been favorites, you know, in almost every game we've played except maybe a couple. And so it, it, it's a team that carries themselves with a lot of confidence. We have great, great respect for Butler and uh, very, very well coached, good players, just a typical Butler team. And when you can win at Villanova, then you have a chance to win a national championship. And, uh, and they do. So, uh, but I know our guys are looking forward to it. We, we love great competition and we're going to get every bit of it tomorrow. Michael Cohen from the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Uh, Kermit, when you took the job 15 years ago, did you think that you'd be in the same spot for that many years trying to build something, or did you envision yourself kind of moving around the way certain individuals in the profession do? You know, uh, if, you, if you come to Murfreesboro, the quality of life is terrific. And uh, you know, I've raised both of my daughters there. And uh, when you have, I'm probably one of the most fortunate guys I've only had two athletic directors. My second one, Chris Massaro, and I are great friends. A guy named Boots Donnelly hired me. I had the same president who hired me 15 years ago. That doesn't happen very much. And so when the quality of life is, is, is as good as it is, I have a special needs daughter that's kind of grown up in that city, and the people there have just embraced Alley in an unbelievable way. That's a huge part of, of us being a fabric of that community. So there's a lot of different things, and plus, you know, we've got a chance to really build it, and uh, it's, it's been really fun for us to, to see it grow. While we wait for another question, when Chris was here, he, he called you guys a Final Four team. Your reaction <laughs> to that? Well, that's a great compliment coming from Chris, and because uh, I think he's the kind of guy that he's just trying to, to, to you know, kind of what he sees, and, and, and that's, what, that's thoughts on our teams. So that makes us feel good. We do feel that, that we can play with anybody in college basketball. And that, that's not arrogantly, that's just, and I'm sure Chris you know, thinks the same thing about his team. We've got really good players, a group that has great experience, uh, a team that you know, we've won in big settings before. And uh, you know, so that's a great compliment. And, uh, you know, and, I, and, I, and I mean this, I told our staff and our team that today, you know, like I just said, I think they're a Final Four team and a team that can, can definitely win a national championship. 
Uh, Kermit, hi, Tom Silverstein with the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. I was wondering what your impression of Tyler Lewis was for Butler, and also, you know, what that type of a uh, smaller point guard does to when you're trying to trap or whatever you're doing in the half, half court. Yeah, you know, his basketball intellect, and I, and I followed him when he was at NC State, and uh, he's got great quickness. He's as good a passer as anybody in college basketball at the point guard position. His assist to turnover ratio is is terrific. He really fits their style of play. And uh, I'm a huge fan. I've watched him from afar from a long time. And, and after you really start watching game after game like we've done last night and today, you have a great appreciation of his toughness and, and just his ability just to find guys at the right time. Anything else for Coach? Thank you. Good luck tomorrow Thank night. you. Thank you.